Good afternoon, everybody. We are back again at 3.30 for our media briefing related to COVID-19. Again, it's a significant day for all of us with the governor's order. We'll be talking about that shortly. It's certainly a time for all of us to reflect on the fact that um, we are in this together. This is not about just um, one organization or one professional group working on COVID-19. We all have to work on it. We all have to work to make sure that we have the least impact possible from a very devastating disease, but we know it impacts all of you. We all have a role to play. Um, today, we're highlighting that the Chippewa Valley works together and that we do work that is critically important in all of the counties that are in this area, but really everywhere across the state. So today we have done in Chippewa counties with us, um, the health department directors, my colleagues from those two um, counties, also sharing a bit about what they are doing to respond to this pandemic. They'll be sharing their thoughts um, in a minute. So a quick status update related to Wisconsin. I will give the Eau Claire update when I come back up and give specifics about Eau Claire. But in Wisconsin, we have 457 positive cases of COVID-19. Five people have died and there have been more than 8,200 negative tests. Today, the governor did release order number 12. It's titled Safer at Home Order. The order is really intended to be very clearly saying that all of us are safer at home unless we are working in an essential service and are allowed to be out. The expectation is people are staying at home except for very specific reasons. The order's long. It will take a bit to digest for everybody, but I'll give you some details about that today. The order starts tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Some people have said that the order is extreme. We talked a bit about that yesterday. This is the logical next step in our public health measures in order to control disease. We do have community spread happening in Wisconsin, although it may not be happening in this area yet. And in order to control community spread, we need to keep that circle very, very small. It's not done lightly. This is an extreme measure, but it's critically important. Today on the news conference with the governor, it was made clear that if we don't do this, that the predictions are really evident from the science that if we don't do this in the next two weeks, the numbers of cases, the numbers of deaths will be significant. While many people that get the, this disease will not be extremely ill and may have limited symptoms, there is a significant part of the population that will get very sick. If we don't take these measures now, the predictions are that more than 22,000 cases um, will be here in the next two weeks and more than 1,000 people could die. So again, critically important that we're doing this now. The research, as was indicated on the governor's announcement today about the virus, is that, as we know, it is something that is, is spread easily, that many people don't show significant symptoms, and that we need to pay attention to, for all of us, um, to not spread to people that may get sick and ill. Looking at other countries, it was reported today that for every one person that's infected, at least two or three additional people can expect to be, to have the disease. Again, when you start doing that multiplication, it becomes a serious, serious problem. Social distancing makes a difference. So our primary message to people is distance matters. We'll be talking about the order in a bit more detail now, but remember that if you do nothing else, some distance makes a difference. So um, when we talk through the order, the order, first of all, is saying stay home except for essential work and essential needs. People will be allowed to travel to get um, groceries, will be allowed to travel to get pharmacy goods and essential needs that they have at home. 
everybody that can stay home is expected to stay home. There are essential businesses that will still be in operation. Those are critically important so we can continue to respond to the disease. Those are all itemized in this order. Um, but again, important that in all settings, whether we're going out for essential reasons or we are in essential jobs, that we social distance. So even today in this room, while we've been working really hard to have few people in this room, we're saying everybody in this room needs to be a distance apart. And we are doing that across our service sectors. We're asking everybody in Wisconsin to shrink their circle. That's what exactly this is about. Today, the order said, shrink that circle down to just your family and the people that live in a household with you, except for those very infrequent times you have to leave. We know that there are people in our groups that aren't going to be able to do that because they are responding to this incident. Um, we need to protect them. We need to protect the healthcare workers, the first responders, those that are in, working in grocery stores and in other essential businesses by the rest of the people staying home. Look at the order, which is on our website. Um, if you have specific questions, we are asking people today to first look at the order. And then if it's not clear to you what, whether your business is essential or what you should be doing as an individual, then please let us know. We will be getting more public messaging out about this. Again, the order just came out. But as we digest that and try and get simple messages for people, our ask is to first review the order and then look on our website and we'll have additional information for you. Um, I think at this point what we will do is have our partners share a bit more about what's happening in Chippewa and Dunn and then again in Eau Claire County and then we'll come back and do um, questions after that point. So Angie Weideman is here from Chippewa County and she will be sharing first. Good afternoon, my name is Angie Weideman. I'm the Chippewa County Public Health Director. Um, I want to first report out on our numbers in Chippewa County. We are currently at one positive case. If you have checked the state website, it might appear that we are at two, but I want to confirm we are at one positive case and there was a data entry error and Chippewa County is currently at one positive case. Um, we have been working really hard with our community partners um, using our incident command structure to follow up to this pandemic and we're working very closely with all of our municipalities in Chippewa County, including their police, fire, EMS, schools, and businesses. As Liska alluded to, many businesses are confused about whether they are considered essential services or not. Um, for that reason, we are working heavily with our chamber as well to get messaging out to let people know what is considered an essential service and what is not. Um, we also have been working very closely with Eau Claire and Dunn counties as viruses do not know county lines. Um, many people that live in the Chippewa Valley may work in Dunn County, um, travel to Chippewa County, and get groceries in Eau Claire County. So there definitely is movement um, between people in the Chippewa Valley. We are asking for people to try to stay home as much as they can, social distance as much as they can, um, to try to really, as Liska said, reduce that circle and interact with less people if possible. Um, one concern that often people think about is uh, isolation or people not being in close contact with people. And typically we ask people to be friendly, um, to be in contact with people, to increase people's mental health. But at this time, we are asking that people do social distance and maybe do something like adopt a neighbor. Maybe call um, a neighbor that you know might be living alone. Um, purposely reach out to people that you know may need extra support at this time. It might be somebody that's in the aging population or a vulnerable population for COVID-19 that really is staying home alone um, on a regular basis. And we're asking people to do that. Um, we definitely want people feeling that they have support and that they have neighbors who care about them. So we are working in Chippewa County on an adopt a neighbor program just to make sure that people have the support that they need at this time. Um, we do feel it's very important for people of all ages to take what the governor is saying seriously. Um, it could be that a younger person, you know, if they're out and about comes in contact with COVID-19 
but then they may have a grandparent or somebody that they see. We don't want to be putting people at risk that are in vulnerable populations, and that's why it's so important for people of all ages to follow what is being said at the national, state, and local levels, um, and especially their local health departments. Um, please stay home. Um, follow the orders just to help keep everybody safe. Um, Chippewa County also does have two special task force, one for vulnerable populations in our community and one for populations dealing with mental health, AODA, or domestic violence. Um, these planning task force are really looking at challenging circumstances and situations to try to provide the best answers for our vulnerable populations in Chippewa County. Um, one other thing that we're looking at is asking for volunteers to do polling from our school districts and our county staff that are under the age of 60. Um, we want to make sure that the most vulnerable populations are not the people who are out working at the polls. Um, thank you so much for your time today and again very happy to be here with Dunn and Eau Claire counties. Um, we do a lot of work together and I think it's important um, that we continue to work well together throughout this pandemic. Thank you. My name is KT Gallagher and I am the Dunn County Health Department Director. Um, so situational update for Dunn County, we continue to have one case in Dunn County. That person is doing well. Uh, we have tested about 50 people in Dunn County and they have tested negative in addition to that one positive case. So I would like to elevate what Liska and Angie had shared we are in this together. I want to really shout out to my community partners in Dunn County and across county lines that are working to keep the public safe. I see you. I appreciate you. Um, our medical systems work across all three counties and they are in this with us and we appreciate them. Our EMS and emergency management partners are side by side with us. We appreciate them. Higher education and our school districts, we're working together. I want to specifically thank CBTC and UW Stout for the amazing partnership that they have shared with us, as well as some of the resources that they have available to them. Um, donations of PPE, as well as technical and communication expertise. We appreciate you. Our critical infrastructure and business partners have been in close communication with us. And you guys are doing public health work. You're screening your employees for travel and for symptoms of illness, and you're keeping your community on plant safe and healthy. Thank you for the work that you're doing. To our Dunn County residents, thank you. This is hard. And it's going to be hard for a little bit now, but it will pay off. You're doing public health work now. Thank you. I need you to stay home. You might be somebody who is a healthy adult. And we appreciate that you stay healthy. But we're staying home for the folks that we love in our circles that might be vulnerable, your partner who might have asthma, your auntie who might be 65. For all those other folks within our communities that we need to stay healthy, we need you to stay home. Like Angie shared, Follow the CDC guidelines. When you're out and about, stay physically apart, six feet. Good hand hygiene. Wash your hands with soap. Good respiratory hygiene. Cover your cough with your elbow. These are important things. And if you're sick in any way, shape, or form, stay home, even for those essential functions that are okay in the order. And then finally, 
I need you to be kind. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. This is hard. We're in it together. Do the things that work for you. Reach out to the mental health professionals that are available for this kind of a crisis. Continue to reach out to your faith community. We're in it together. Be kind to our communities. Main Street is the economic driver of our community. Those businesses that are open for takeout or as an essential service, take care of them. If you can make a purchase online, do that. Take care of our community and be kind. Thank you. So enormous thanks to KT and Angie. I, I think you can hear from all of us that we take this seriously. It's important. We are seeing the enormous number of people and organizations that are partnering. We are in this together, and, and, and we need to pay attention to that. So for Eau Claire County, as of today, there are five confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Eau Claire County. At this point, we are not a community that's been identified as having community spread. That means, again, that these cases have an understood source that is not, um, that is not within the community in a way that is, meets the definition of community spread. Um, I assure you that as we have more cases, we will let you know. Um, do know that, like we've talked about before, those cases get the clear and um, regular follow-up that we do for all cases. Those cases are home, and they are doing well at this point. All direct contacts of those cases are self-quarantined. The same as yesterday, we know that we have lots of tests happening. I don't have new numbers on testing, but again, we have more than 150 negative tests with more than 250 tests being done. I assume that everybody in Eau Claire will follow the order. We know it's difficult. We know probably it's most particularly difficult for people that are healthy. As was stated earlier, some people that are healthy may say, why does this hap have to pertain to me? Because of what we know now about the disease and the potential spread of the disease from healthy people who may have limited symptoms or no symptoms, we need healthy people included to follow the order. We are working in Eau Claire already. We have been working in Eau Claire with law enforcement, the district attorney, and our legal team to really think through how are we approaching people that are not following the order. First with education, assuming that we first need to do that for people that may not understand the order. But if necessary, following that with enforcement. We are taking it seriously. We also in Eau Claire, starting um, right after midnight today, did have a local order in place related to gatherings that um, were not covered in the governor's order related to mass gatherings. That was in place all day today to really focus on a few gatherings that we knew were happening that were outside of the governor's order but were certainly concerning to us because it was more than 10 people. We also have heard from healthcare partners a really specific message. And that message, I will say to you, is that the most important thing this community can do to support our healthcare workers is to call first instead of just showing up when experiencing symptoms. We don't want the healthcare system overwhelmed because of concerns about COVID-19. Healthcare does have resources to screen and to make sure people get to the right place at the right time. Again, if you are in an emergency, whatever the reason, obviously going to the emergency room is critical. But people should first, if it's not a life and death emergency, first make a phone call to their healthcare provider about COVID-19. 
In Eau Claire tomorrow, we will have a COVID call center stood up. We have been uh, having a hotline that has been personed by the health department. Staff and fo phone calls were returned to the, from that line, but starting tomorrow morning, we will have a call center. The UW Eau Claire partners that we have have been willing to help us get that set up. We are getting volunteers and staff for that. Um, again, the same phone number will work that we have been talking about, the 715-839-4725 number that will be forwarded to the call center. And um, it will be available um, seven days a week with a variety of hours. You can check our website for more specifics about that. Again, that call center is to take calls from the public to answer questions and direct people to resources. We ask you to first go to the website. Again, we have limited capacity in any of these functions, so please first go to the website, try and problem solve there. If you cannot, that is what our COVID call center is for. I would reiterate again, if you're young, if you're healthy, if you are confused about the order, please pause, look at the order, and understand that this is a disease that will impact all of us, and our job is to protect those that we love most of all, because we will know people that get sick, we likely will know people that die from this disease, and we certainly know partners in the community that, community that we expect to keep working. We need to protect those people, both those people that we love and the people in our community that we count on for services. We can protect them best by following the order and staying home when we're able to. So we now um, can take questions. Um, and again, a reminder before we start that is our website in Eau Claire is available. Um, as everybody has said, look at local websites as well as the state and CDC website. Um, and also remember that we need to take care of each other. We talk a lot about social distancing and that's frankly, after reflection, a tough um, set of language choices. So we want physical distance. We want six feet between people. It doesn't mean that we can't call. It doesn't mean that we can't hug the people that live in our home. We want people to remember that we're social animals. We need social connectedness. And again, as Angie and, and KT said, if people are struggling, reach out. Um, the governor did announce a phone number that is available for people that are, are struggling. That number is 800-985-5990. So please consider using that if people are in crisis and they need extra support. So now questions. Yes. In the, uh governor's new uh, order today about five people. Can you speak to the maximum number of people being lowered from 10 to 5 and how that's supposed to be understood and lived out? Yeah, again, we are analyzing the order for the details. The goal is to have as few people as possible. It sounds like in the order itself it signals five and we'll have to review that carefully. That'll be part of our guidance. But in public spaces, again, it's possible to go outside, but small numbers. It's possible to do things at the grocery store, small numbers. So for all of those reasons, we will get back to you. We want a small circle, and the goal for all of this is to have some distance from people and to have your circle be small. Certainly there are families and there are situations where more than five is necessary. I have a family that may be larger than five, so that's, you know, that we understand that, but that is the goal. Yeah? Uh, the president had said today that he hopes to have everything pretty much done by Easter, mm -hmm. which is well before the governor's, you know, date for you know, ending this. Do we at the city, state, local level, if he orders everything open before this runs out, can these rules still be implemented, I guess, at the local level? Sure. So the question is related to the president today indicated that he thought things would be done by Easter. Um, the, the science and the best practices do not show that this disease will be over in a short amount of time. 
We do have state authority and local authority to control communicable disease, and we will use every measure we need to um, to do that. Yes. Sure. So a series of questions about enforcement of the order at an individual or even a business level. Um, the order does clearly speak to the fact that um, there is enforcement of this and that we need to take it seriously. Um, every local jurisdiction will obviously be working with their law enforcement partners on exactly how orders will be enforced, and that work is happening now. It is not our expectation that people will be pulled over actively to check why they are traveling. The expectation is that travel is being done only for the reasons that are indicated in the order. There is no requirement in the order that people p carry with them any um, sort of indication in paper that they are an essential worker or that they are on essential business. Some countries have done measures like that, but our Wisconsin order does not include a requirement to carry a piece of paper with you when you are out of your house. Yes? This fifth uh, person identified as positive, can you tell us any more about his or her travel or any, any specifics? Sure. So the question was about the fifth positive in Eau Claire County. We just received that, and that is being investigated now. I don't have more information at this point in time. It is my understanding that, again, we do not meet the definition of community transmission. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, the, the number is that uh, we're given today, um, if are they saying if we aren't putting these measures in place that we already have, or do they feel that we need to go even beyond what the governor has already uh, suggested with this order? Sure. So the governor's um, update today included from um, our medical experts some modeling to say what might happen um, if we do nothing. So the question was, is that related to this specific order or is that related to anything that comes next? Um, my understanding from the model that was proposed today is that in looking at whether we should do this, we should take this extreme measure, um, very careful look was done at other countries and other states, and in looking at what we call an epi curve, uh, how disease progresses based on how infectious it is, the estimates are there if we don't right now ask people to stay home unless they are essential workers and in doing essential tasks that we could expect that kind of a change. This is not going to end disease in Wisconsin by doing this. This is also not going to end deaths in Wisconsin by doing this. That, that's the unfortunate truth given our situation, and it's hard for all of us. The goal here is to have the fewest number of people at the same time get ill and need the health care um, high-level support that is happening in our hospitals and in our emergency rooms. Any additional questions? Thank you for um, time today. We know this is hard. This is a big announcement for our community starting at 8 tomorrow morning. We know that life is substantively changed for many people until this order is no longer in effect in Wisconsin. We know it'll be hard. We know that in Eau Claire and in Dunn and in Chippewa counties, we have confidence that our community wants to do the right thing. And um, we know that you may have questions, so please do ask them. Please do look at our websites to get more information, and we will talk more tomorrow.